Nice to see you all. Thank you for joining us. Ralph, let's start with you. I've asked you this before, but I think it is so important. Why is partnering with Tech United and running this challenge important to you and important to PSE&G? Well, the theme says it all, right? It's making a better planet. And our company name says it all. The PS stands for public service. And I can't think of any more pressing problem right now than, than climate change. And the number one source of carbon emissions in America today is transportation. So we need to electrify transportation at the same time that we decarbonize electricity. So working with Tech United gives us a network of people that quite candidly we don't often interact with and a lot of very smart people with great ideas. It also gives me way too many moments to compliment your shirts, which I love, but thank you for being here. Can you tell people about Hugo New? Because you know, I know a good amount about it, but I'm not sure it has the mass awareness in the region that may, perhaps it deserves. So can you share with people a little bit about Hugo New? So uh, is this working? Yes. yes. Um, I'm Wendy New. I'm CEO and chairman of Hugo New. Uh, most people would call me a real estate developer, but I am not a real estate developer. I have 130 acres in Kearney, New Jersey. Um, I'm an environmentalist, a social justice advocate, and a business person. And that has become my platform for making transformative change. I'm looking around the room here, and having walked around, I'm seeing some diversity, but frankly, not enough. And I'm hoping that technology, as we move forward, is going to become much more diverse, is going to promise, give us the promise of a greater shared prosperity and deal with the existential crisis of climate change. So that's why I'm here and why this is so incredibly important. Thank you. Excellent. Love the message. Thank you very much. Sean, recent announcement, Hacks coming to Newark. Can you tell people who may have missed the news what Hacks is about? Hacks is a deep tech um, startup uh, acceleration program. Uh, we give around a quarter of a million to a half a million dollars to each of the companies that gets accepted. We get around 8,000 applications a year. We select, uh, we'll be uh, selecting 40 uh, globally, but 20 will end up in our uh, US headquarters program here in Newark, New Jersey. So um, yeah, so we, we, we've, we're just uh, building out a, a 40,000 60 to 60,000 square foot facility that'll have a couple hundred entrepreneurs that'll be based there. Uh, over the next, uh, you know, over the next 10 years, we're, uh, so you know, and, and rotating companies coming in and out. The Hacks companies that we've backed so far are already worth eight billion dollars uh, um, from the over 100 uh, hardware companies that we've backed uh, previously, and they're just growing at, a, at an amazing rate. And you know, climate change is about 30 percent of of our portfolio. We we do other things other than uh, new uh, processes, new ways of, of energy efficiency, et cetera, that Im improve the environment. But uh, we also do human health and planetary health uh, and medical devices and all sorts of other types of deep tech. And companies. we'll hear more with Sean later with Tim Sullivan, the CEO of the New Jersey Economic Development Authority, about why you're moving to Newark and, and why New Jersey, which I'm very excited about. But I, I want to highlight for those of you who may have been with me in the tech community for like the last decade since the start of the New Jersey Tech Meetup, these are all three relatively new commitments to local investment in the tech community, right? With Hacks going to Newark, with Carney Point investing heavily also for entrepreneurs and, and, and the variety of other very impressive topics that Wendy touched on. And with Ralph's, Ralph has become an incredible partner. PSEG has been a fantastic partner to Tech United. I believe this is what will make New Jersey thrive and gives us an edge to succeed. So I just want to make sure we highlight this is not like a tried and true decades old situation. These are all new. There's a lot of momentum in New Jersey that's new and exciting. So become, you know, join us and become part of this. So with that said, let's bring on our first company. I don't know which one's first. Who's up first? Park ENT? Park Ent? All right. He looks excited. Let's look. When you come up on stage and you pitch your startup, it's like showing your baby to the world. And a lot of times the world is like, your baby is ugly, and that doesn't feel that good. So we got to make everybody feel really good about showing off their company. Big round of applause for our first pitch today. They have one minute. Parking in two. Can you all hear me? Okay, good. Hi, I'm Thad with Parkint, and there were last year there were three times as many electric bicycles sold than electric cars, but only eight locations across the nation to charge them. 
There's an opportunity for 300,000 locations. There's a $2 billion domestic opportunity, an $80 billion worldwide opportunity. And we're starting off with our first secure e-bike charging station. We've deployed it into Atlanta, Georgia right now. And you just roll your bike up into it. You access it with a phone app. And then it locks the wheel and the frame of your bicycle. And it secures through the spokes, so you got to check those. And then you go ahead and you plug in your charger into the station and plug it into the e-bike and access the one kilowatt of backup power supply we got from recycled e-scooter batteries. And that can run off solar power. Our customers are retail businesses, corporate campuses, and municipalities. And I'm Thad with Parkint. Awesome. We're gonna take a one question from each judge, we're gonna, or we'll see how we do. But Ralph, we'll start with you on the questions and I'll keep it moving, so, so forgive me if I interrupt. What would you do with $50,000? With $50,000, we're a very strapped startup, so we'd actually expand. We'd finish off the nine other stations we have in production right now, be able to put those out into the field, and be able to actually, of the two people we have in our garage startup, we'd hire somebody else to be able to help spread the load around and get things rolling out. But also go solar on our stations and be connected to uh, communication cellular. We could take one more, Wendy. Well, I'm a big fan of electric uh, bike companies. Jump, I don't know if you know, is a Brooklyn-based company. Grew to hundreds of millions. It's exited very well. But is this for any electric bike, or is this for just a particular type of electric bike these stations, that you recharge? These stations are designed to fit any electric bicycle on the market today. I designed it off the one point in commonality every bicycle frame has in an entirely custom market. So your e-bike, your e-bike, your e-bike. The fleet e-bikes, they can all go into it and be charged. Just got to plug the charger in and plug it into the e-bike, and you're good to go. Awesome job. Thank you very much. Good luck. To be clear, the judges have seen more information than just this minute, so this is a summary of it. Next up is Chris with Hit Nano. Come on, let them hear it. Whenever you're ready, you got a minute. So can everybody hear me? OK, good. So. How do we accelerate the electrification of transport? Well, in an electric vehicle, the battery is the most expensive part, and in the battery is the cathode material that's the most expensive and difficult to produce. Um, so the challenge is to produce cheaper cathode materials and green manufacturing methods in order to lower the cost um, and reduce the lifetime environmental footprint of batteries in electric vehicles. See, so yeah, I'm Chris from Hit Nano. Uh, we were founded at Princeton University. Now we're based in Jersey, just south of Trenton. Um, and we provide solutions for the next generation of energy storage materials. And we have a process, a manufacturing process, for cathode materials. Um, it's completely different to the conventional method. It means we can improve the electrochemical performance of the material. We can reduce the cost by 30%, and with a significantly lower environmental impact. We're, at, we're definitely over a minute, so we're going to move to questions, but all good. I happen to know that Ralph has a question on this topic. Do you, you want to go? I, I'm sorry to go to Ralph first. Okay, go ahead. Wendy, go ahead. No, I'm just curious. Have you um, considered the full life cycle of these materials that you're using? And by that, I mean the disposal or the safe disposal of these materials at the end of life? Yes, in the sense that one of the things we, we aim to do is reduce the amount of cobalt in our materials. Cobalt is toxic, it's expensive, it's mined, in, um, it's, it's, it's mined in politically unstable countries under dangerous conditions. And so what we want to do is remove cobalt from the material and in that sense improve the life cycle of the materials we're making. And I assume other toxic materials as well. I beg your pardon? Other toxic materials that might be endanger the environment or public health? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, our manufacturing process itself uses less chemical additives has a lower CO2 footprint than the conventional method. Ralph? So, so what's the primary obstacle to scaling up and commercialization? We just need to, we just need to do the work right now. We've, we have a plan. We're doing this right now. We're building a reactor in our laboratory. It's 12 feet tall, substantially larger than what we're making now. And we plan to, to group these and we can produce commercially relevant quantities of material in a very short space of time. All right. Thank you very much. Good job. Congratulations on making the finals. Last is Oleg from Ioteca. Bring the love. Come on. What do you got?
Hello, everyone. It's my pleasure and honor to be here. So shall I start? You should start. Ayateka. What Ayateka is about is 30 plus percent of pollution is generated by transportation. Transportation ecosystem, electricity ecosystem, they never work together, but in order to reduce the 30 some percent, we need to electrify transportation. How do we bring those two ecosystems together? We need intelligence. This fusion point is the intelligent charging infrastructure. Do you remember what Intel and Microsoft had done for PC, for computing industry? It was an explosion. Every one of us has the motherboard that was developed by Intel and Microsoft. We developed the same. It's a motherboard with operating system to power intelligent chargers that allow our customers to build products in no time with very minimum expense and guaranteed interoperability. Examples, look at this beautiful Porsche Taycan charging of one of our chargers right there. That's an example of our product. How do we do that? We need communication. We need technology that connects the two ecosystems. It was born and developed in New Jersey by members of my team. We need silicon that was conceived and developed in New Jersey by members of my team. And now, as a new startup, we took all of this knowledge and technology to grow jobs in New Jersey, to create new products and services, including cloud services, to enable electrified infrastructure, to accelerate the adoption of electric vehicles of any kind, passenger cars, bikes, motorcycles, airplanes, boats, trucks, what have you. How we use money? We will grow office in New Jersey to create more jobs, amplify this money, to create even more technology and more services to bring electrified future closer to today. Great. Well, Sean, I'm going to go right to you since you're in the hardware world. Sure. Uh, I, actually, how much money have you raised and, and how uh, do you expect this $50,000 prize to specifically help you grow? Sure. As of today, we have raised close to $30 million. The last round was actually led by British Petroleum, among others, an oil company investing into electrified transportation. Quite interesting. How this money will be used? We're expanding globally. Next year, we will start shipping volumes of our chargers everywhere in the world. Every person that can start working in our office means more electric vehicles on the road, more charging infrastructure deployed. So every penny that we can put together today into roll it into New Jersey office that drives all of this electrification around the globe is priceless. We've got time for one more quick question. Wendy, Ralph. So do you, do you have a specific target market in the United States, or is New Jersey that specific market? Interestingly enough, we started from Europe, because we used to work for Steel Microelectronics. We made chips. And of course, a lot of our customers were European. And frankly speaking, up until probably this year, electrified transportation was not really a topical component of our strategy here in the US. Now we see that things are changing, changing rapidly. Target markets, we have been very active in California. We have worked very, very closely with California Energy Commission and AB 2127. I participated personally in the development of this bill and many other things. Now I hope that you and I together can bring some of that to New Jersey. And I really count on that. Well, we're working on it. Count on it, I can't promise, but we're working on it. That's it for the Startups. Big round of applause for all three. I'm going to ask the judges to go off stage for a couple minutes and deliberate and have the startups all come back up for a few minutes and we'll ask you a couple questions. You guys, come on back. You can do it. Thank you. No, we don't want you to deliberate here, but thank you. <laughs> round of applause for our judges. Startups are on the way back. You guys can sit down. So. Has this, you know, our goal here, I'm going to put you on the spot, maybe we'll find out something interesting, but our goal is to create opportunity for startups. Has this Better Planet Challenge created some of that opportunity? Well, yes, most definitely. I'm in a situation where I throw my name into a hat to a lot of different opportunities and for being able to come here and pitch and being able to tell everybody that, you know, if we get out and if we do win, cross your fingers, we could potentially get a 1% of the parking spaces in the United States and supply 1% of the power back to this country yeah. with our solar option. So the option, opportunity here is amazing for us. What about, besides the cash, which I know is you know, short term very critical, but a relationship with an organization like PSEG, is that something, you know, we, we think that's hugely valuable. I'm curious if, if either of you think that. I totally agree with you. Cash is very important, but much more important part is relationships. 
when we're building electrified ecosystem, it's a huge ecosystem with very, very wide range of players. And this ecosystem needs to be biodiverse to survive and bring fruits to the market. So partnership with organizations like PSNG, who drives the grid. As an example, OEMs that essentially produce different types of vehicles. We need to bring them together, and we're doing that today. I also serve as the president of Charian Alliance that is a, amalgamates 220 organizations worldwide. We need to work together to bring this electrified future forward. And I think the event that you're hosting here is very important because we're bringing global thought process on a local scale. Yeah. And that is very important. Chris, pitching a, a, a complicated product to a generalist audience, which this could be, is, is a challenge. So when you think about you know, how do you pitch and how do you communicate effectively, not just, you know, I, I think with startups it's not just what is the solution, but how does one effectively communicate quickly what that solution is. When you go to pitch, what do you think about? I think about just simply making it as clear as possible and also solicit the input of colleagues, you know, and also people that are very unfamiliar with the subject, you know, that's how I go about it. Yeah. yeah. Do you find that audiences are, you know, the struggle to grasp the solution? We'll have to speak to them, I think, find out what they thought. <laughs> I guess we will. I, hey, uh, Jasmine, Ralph, Rick, do we have a winner? Yes? Okay, one moment, one moment. Any last question from the audience? We're going to go with a no on that. Guys, congratulations for making it to the finals. Thank you so much for being a part of this. I really appreciate it. If you could go stand over there. Big round of applause. The moment of truth is coming up. All right, Ralph, you're back. Ralph's going to be the judge representative, if that's all right. You can, here you go. He's on six, by the way. So, how have we done in, you know, this is our second annual uh, Better Planet Challenge. I do mean it when I say I really enjoy working with you and PSEG. But from a business perspective, why is this a worthwhile partnership? Well, well so I, I alluded to before, there's lots of great uh, booths here, lots of fabulous information for people to speak with. But last year's winner is somebody that we're working with regularly because they have a window film that we think can help customers use less energy. And that, that's our number one goal at PSEG is energy efficiency. And uh, we've been working with them hand in glove to get a lab certification. And, and that's a, it's a $1 billion investment program that we're making. Now, not all $1 billion will go to, I don't want my friends at WEX to get uh, all carried away, is going to window uh, films, but, but this is another area that we are heavily engaged in now, electric vehicle infrastructure creation in New Jersey. So I'm, ex I'm excited about the, what entrepreneurs can bring to that, to that game. Likewise, and I want to make sure you get a chance for the public service announcement uh, or plug. You know, we often talk about very high-tech solutions to things, but you were the first and often person to remind me of a very low-tech solution that would help save energy costs. So I feel uh, you know, obliged to, to let you make that announcement here. I hope that you even know what I'm queuing you for. I'm curious what your response would be, but what's the number one thing people can actually do to better insulate their homes? It's just put caulking around your windows, actually. Yeah, it's pretty low-tech. Right? <laughs> so your programmable thermostats, uh, it's, uh, yeah, I, I often disappoint people with my <laughs> with my advice to them, they want me to suggest the Internet of Things and all sorts of glamorous technology. But, but there are some low-hanging fruit in America and in New Jersey. So this was a tough decision. Yeah. And, moment uh, of truth. And, and it's a moment of truth. Now, I can tell you, I am absolutely convinced that PSEG will be working with all three of these companies. That's excellent. Because everything that they had to say is something that I know uh, we will be actively involved with. Uh, but at this point in time, we think well, Hold on. You, get, you ready to do the reveal? I am. We need the, like, yes, you got it. We need the drum roll. Give me some leg taps. We need a little bit of vibe in here. Is this the only guy who knows what a drum roll is? Come on, hit your knees. You go like this. All right, whenever you're ready. Okay, so from the point of view of the most effective use of the $50,000 at this point in time, the winner is Park End Cycles. All right, Park End. Congratulations. Come on up. You don't really have to. Would you like to say a word? I'm going to put you on the spot. Well, thank you. We'll take that. <laughs> but yeah, this is uh, really going to help uh, a startup like mine. We've been bootstrapped from day one, and uh, we got to the point where we are now with very little, and we already have product patented and get things rolling. So we're going to very much use that appropriately and 
thoughtfully awesome. to move faster. Congratulations. And I, if you didn't catch what Ralph said, he did the, the prize was actually the biggest thing was he said they will work with all three of these companies. Having been one of these startups or in your shoes, that even though the fifty thousand sounds great, that actually is I think the most uh, it speaks the most to this. So I'm so glad that we made this happen. Congratulations, Ralph, thank, thank you so you. much. Big round of applause for Parking and T. Congratulations. Our next session starts momentarily. Thank you.